Hi and welcome to munshigiri.com. This tutorial is about dividend decisions. In this tutorial, we'll, we'll be covering the basic concepts as well as the questions asked in the various examinations. Basically, we'll be covering questions from the CA final exam. Uh, so, here's one tip before we start. So, uh, always link your studies. Like, if you have a topic common in two or three subjects, then do the topic simultaneously. You'll understand the topic in a much better way. Like this chapter, dividend is covered in financial management as well as your audit. So, first of all, read the provisions in the audit relating to the dividend. So, when you know the legal framework and other related things, you can understand the practical topic in a much better way. So, if you have not covered the theory portion, you can always refer to my video on dividend. So, uh, let's start with the dividend decisions. So, this is dividend decisions. So, first is what is the meaning of dividend? Dividend is the return on investment or we can say that it is the part of profits that are distributed to the shareholders. Part of profits distributed to shareholders. So, the net earnings are divided into two parts. So, the profits or the net earnings, they are basically divided into two parts. One is the retained earning and another is the dividend. Retained earning and the dividends. Retained earnings are the earnings that are retained in the business to finance the long term growth. These are retained in business to finance long term growth. And dividends are generally paid in cash. So now we have various determinants of dividend policy. So we are going to cover, the, cover those. These are the determinants of dividend policy. The first one being dividend payout ratio. Dividend payout ratio. Dividend payout ratio is the part of profits that are distributed to the shareholders as dividend. Dividend payout ratio should be determined with two objectives. The first one being for maximizing the wealth of shareholders. First is for maximizing wealth of shareholders. And second one is for providing funds to finance growth. Second determinant is the stability of dividends. That is how stable the dividends are. The dividend policy of a company should be stable and consistent. If you will see, if a company has a stable dividend policy, it is, it has, it is consistent, then the share price of that share, so the, so the share price of that company will be higher in comparison to a company having an inconsistent dividend policy. Third is legal, contractual, internal constraints and restrictions. And restrictions. So all these restrictions these should be followed for example if a company has raised funds from a financial institution or acquired any assets on lease then the money lender may place restriction on the company on distribution of dividend till they are paid off their installment of loan, loan principal and interest. 
Next is capital market conditions and inflation. Capital market conditions and inflation. So a firm having easy access to capital market will follow a liberal dividend policy as compared to a firm having the limited access. So there are various theories on dividend. Now we, we are coming to the practical part of this chapter covering with this starting with the theories of dividend. Theories of dividend. So in all we are going to cover five theories. The various models that we are going to cover under dividend decisions are the first one is the Walter model. Second is the MM approach that is Modigliani and Miller approach. Third is traditional position. The fourth one being the Gordon model. And the last is dividend growth model. So let's start with the Walter model first. Okay. This is Walter model. This is the first model that we are starting in the today's session. Now this Walter model is named after Professor James E. Walter. The Walter suggested that the dividend decision of a company is relevant decision. This is relevant decision. Now we are going to understand what we actually mean by the term relevant decision. Now, According to Walter, there are three types of firms. There are three types of firms. They can be a growing concern. They can be a declining concern. And they can be a stable concern. They can be a stable concern. So first we will cover the growing concerns. In case of growing concerns, the available return from the projects of the company is greater than the return required by the investor. So what we, what we mean here is that the available return from projects is greater than the required return by the investor. Required return is equal to the cost of equity. That is, this return is equal to the market rate of return. This is equal to market rate of return. The investor will expect to get at least the market rate of return from the company. So Walter suggests in that case the company should have a zero payout ratio. If the concern is a growing concern then the company should have zero payout ratio. So that the company can invest its projects back and earn a return higher than the market rate of return. Because you saw that the company is earning a rate higher than the rate provided by the market. So Walter suggests that the company should invest its profits in the company itself so that it can pay back a higher amount to the investor and the share price of the company will be maximum in case the company pays zero zero payout okay second comes is a declining concern in case of declining concerns the available return from the projects of the company is less than the required return or less than the ke in that case the company should pay 100% payout ratio should pay 100% payout ratio so that the reason is that because the company is not earning 
as much as the market rate of return so the investor invest so that the investor can invest his funds elsewhere and can earn a return better than better than that the company is earning on its investment so if the company pays a 100% dividend then in that a case the share price of the company shall be maximum third is the stable concern in case of stable concern the the available return from the projects of company is equal to the required return it does not matter whether the company pays dividend or it does not pay dividend the share price of the company remains the same now the, there is a formula for calculation of market price under the walter model we're going to cover that now the formula given by walter is the formula is it says p0 is equal to dividend per share plus earning per share minus dividend per share into available return divided by required return and the whole thing divided by the required return this is p0 is is equal to current market price dps is dividend per share eps is earning per share ar available return rr is required return this is also known as cost of equity or in short you can call it ke so now let's solve a practical question from c examination this appeared in november 14 examination so let's look at this question we have the question here now this is the question now the question says Goldilocks Limited. Okay, this is visible, right? Goldilocks Limited was started a year back with equity capital of rupees forty lakhs. How much is the equity capital? It's rupees forty lakhs. The other details are as under. The earnings of the company are rupees four lakh. The price earning ratio is twelve point five times. Dividend paid is rupees three lakh twenty thousand. Number of shares forty thousand, and the question, the requirement of question is, find the current market price of share, use the Walters model, and second requirement is, find whether the company's dividend payout ratio is optimal, and use the Walters formula. Okay, so we are going to solve this question here. Let's do it. First of all, let's write the Walters formula. So, what was the Walters formula? it was p0 is equal to dps plus eps minus dps into ar divided by rr the whole thing divided by rr so all the things that we need here is first is dps eps available return and the required return these are the things that we need here so let's leave some space for the actual solution and do our workings so first one is dividend per share so now see that the dividend paid by the company is rupees 320000 and the number of shares are 40000 so how much the dividend per share comes out to be it comes out to be rupees 8 second is earning per share that is eps the total earning of the company is rupees 4 lakh on how much shares 40000 so the earning per share is rupees 10 per share now comes the available return that is ar third available return is the company has earned a 4 lakh rupees on an investment of rupees 40 lakhs right the company has invested now the shareholders have invested a 40 lakhs rupees and the earnings of the company on that investment is rupees 4 lakh so there is the available return or available return is 10% that is 4 lakh divided by 40 lakhs 
into 100 so this is your 10 percent and ke or your requ required return this is this can be calculated as inverse of so sorry okay this can be calculated as inverse of p ratio ke is equal to 1 divided by p ratio so here it is 1 divided by 12.5 into 100 is equal to 8 percent so now we have all the ingredients so we can fit into our formula so dps is 8 plus eps is 10 minus 8 available return is 10 percent divided by required return is 8 percent the whole thing is to be divided by the required return so let's just calculate this so this is 10 minus 8 into 0 0.10 divided by 0 0.08 plus 8 divided by 0 0.08 so it comes out to be rupees 131.25 is visible right okay rupees 131.25 so we are done with the first part of the question see the requirement of question was find the current market price of share use the Walters model so we have calculated the current market price of share the second part the question asks find whether the company's dividend payout ratio is optimal use Walters formula so let's do this one quickly so for that we will see whether the concern is a growing concern, declining concern or a stable concern. So let us just check that out. The available return of the company is 10% and the required return of the investor is 8%. That means the company is earning higher than the rate required by the investor. So we can say that this concern is a growing concern and in case of growing concern Walter suggests that there should be a zero payout ratio however the company has a payout ratio of 80 percent how did we get to know that it's 80 percent it's paying a dividend of 3 lakh 20 thousand on the earnings of 4 lakh so it comes out to be 80 percent so the so we can say that the dividend payout ratio of Goldilocks limited is not optimal so we will also show the share price of the company in case the company pays a zero dividend so in that case so let's not repeat the formula here we'll do it directly so the DPS will be zero earning per share will remain the same that is 10 there will be no DPS the available return is 0 0.10 0 0.08 then and the whole thing divided by 0 0.08 let's just calculate this okay this is 10 into 0 0.10 divided by 0 0.08 the whole thing divided by 0 0.08 it comes out to be rupees 156.25 so you saw that when the company does not pay any dividend, it has a zero payout ratio. The share price of the company has increased remarkably from rupees 131.25. Uh, if the dividend payout ratio is 80% to rupees 156.25, that is in case of a zero payout ratio. Coming to another approach we have is a Modigliani and Miller approach. This is the second approach that we are going to cover over here. Okay, second is MM approach. MM approach. This is Modigliani and Miller approach. So, MM uh, &M suggests that the dividend decisions are irrelevant decisions. These are irrelevant decisions. So, the Walter had said that the dividend decisions are relevant decisions and we had also seen it. How he said that dividend decisions are relevant decisions because the 
the share price increased in case the company pays dividend or the company does not pay dividend there is a fluctuation in the share price however the modigliani and miller states that the dividend decision is a irrelevant decision it says that whether a company plans to pay dividend or no dividend the current price of a share of a company will not be affected so there are two cases we are going to cover in this is first is in case the company pays dividend company pays dividend and the second is in case the company does not pay dividend so in case the company pays dividend in that a case we calculate the share price at year end p1 as p0 1 plus ke p1 is the price at year end price at year end p0 is the price of share at year beginning and ke as we have already seen that ke is the rate of return so this was case 1 that we covered the second thing is if the company this was if the company does not pay dividend the case company does not pay dividend so the second case is in case company pays dividend company pays dividend so in that a case the share price at year end will be equal to p0 minus the dividend okay so in case you need to calculate the current price of a share this was year end price and in case you need to calculate the year beginning price year beginning price or you can say the current price so for that you have another formula and that formula is P zero is equal to P one plus D one divided by one plus K E. That is the present value of year end price and the dividend. Okay, so we are going to actually cover why the mother, uh, the Modigliani and Miller said that the dividend decisions are irrelevant decisions. We are going to cover that. So for that, let's just look at one question that. Is a RTP question for from CA final November two thousand thirteen RTP. See is that this is the question. I have it here. Is the question visible, right? Okay. So let's quickly do this. It says that X Limited has eight lakhs equity shares outstanding at the beginning of the year. So the number of equity shares are eight lakhs. The current market price of the share is rupees one twenty. Current market price is one twenty. That is P zero is given one twenty. The board of directors of company is contemplating rupees six point four per share as dividend. The rate of capitalization appropriate to the risk class to which the company belongs is nine point six percent. That is, we are given the KE is nine point six percent. Based on MM approach. Calculate the market price of share of the company when the dividend is declared and when the dividend is not declared. Okay, so what is the requirement of question? The question is requires you to calculate the market price of the share of the company when the dividend is declared and when the dividend is not declared. Okay, so solution. Let's quickly note down what is available in the question: number of equity shares, number of equity shares is equal to eight lakhs. Okay, the current market price P zero is equal to rupees one twenty. The board of directors is contemplating six point four as dividend. Dividend is rupees six point four per share. The rate of capitalization and KE we have is nine point six percent. So we had actually seen the formula. So we have actually noted down all the details of the question over here. So you don't really need to look out look out at the question. So we had looked at the formula that P zero is equal to P one plus D one divided by one plus KE, right? 
so uh, that is the present value of year end price and and the dividend so two cases will be covered a is in case the dividend is declared in case dividend declared and let's cover it here only in case dividend not declared so we cover this formula p0 is equal to p1 plus d1 divided by 1 plus ke p0 we have is 120 is equal to p1 we have to calculate plus d d1 is 6.4 divided by 1 plus ke we, we are given as 9.6 percent so we'll just calculate it this is 120 plus how much 120 into 0 0.096 120 into point zero nine six. this is 11.52 11.52 equal to p1 plus 6.4 so P1 is plus 120 minus 6.4. P1 is equal to 125.12. So in case the dividend is not declared, so the formula will remain the same over here too. It says 120 is equal to P1 divided by 1 plus 0 0.096. So P1 is equal to 120 plus 11.52. So P1 is equal to 120 plus 11.52 is 131.52 rupees 131.52. Now why MM said that dividend decision is irrelevant because if you see that in case 1 the investor gets rupees 125.12 at year end as the capital appreciation plus he is getting a dividend of rupees 6.14 which if you calculate is equal to rupees 131.52 so let me show you this is 125.12 plus the dividend that the company is paying 6.4 this comes out to be equal to 131.52 this is exactly equal to this amount so, uh, it, here in this case, the investor gets all the amount is capital appreciation. The dividend is not declared by the company. So, that is why uh, Modigliani and Miller said that the investor in both the cases is, is at the same position. That is, the dividend decision is an irrelevant decision. It does not affect the share price in any way. Okay, so now let's look at the second part of the question. It's visible. Okay, how many new shares? The question says, How many new shares? This was part one. How many new shares are to be issued by the company if the company desires to fund an investment budget of rupees 3.20 crores by the end of year, assuming the net income for the year will be rupees 1.60 crores? Now, in this case, what the company wants is, the company wants to make an investment of rupees 320 lakhs, right? 3.2 crores, 320 lakhs. And for that, it wants to raise the money from the public. And the question asks that how many shares the company needs to issue in order to raise rupees 320 lakhs. So, it's very simple, right? Let's just do it. The company wants to raise how much money? 320 lakhs. The amount of profits available with the company are 160 lakhs, 1.60 crores minus 160 lakhs. Again, there will be two cases in case the company pays dividend or in case the company does not pay dividend. Let's say company pays dividend. So, in case the company will company pays dividend, so, there will be some amount that the company will be paying to the shareholders. What is that amount? 6.4 into how much were the number of shares? 8 lakhs. So, 8 lakh into 6.4. This is 51 lakh and 20,000. So, this is 51 lakh and 20,000. Okay. So, why we have added this? 
because this is this is an expenditure for the company this is going to be an expenditure for the company and this is an income for the company right so this will be divided by share price at year end in case the company declares dividend the share price at year end was rupees 125.12 we have calculated in step 1 so let's divide it by that amount so this is okay this is 320 lakhs plus 51 lakh 20000 minus 160 lakhs this is to be divided by 125.12 so the number of shares that come come out to be comes out to be 168798 okay 168798 shares this was case 1 we covered where the company pays the dividend so in case let's do the b part in it the company does not pay or does not declare dividend so in that case the company wants to raise the funds of 320 lakhs minus the funds available with the company are 160 lakhs it does not have to pay any dividend in this case and the share price at year end that we calculated was rupees 131.52 now in this case this is 160 lakhs 320 lakhs minus this much this is 160 lakh 160 lakhs divided by 131.52 the number of shares comes out to be 1 lakh 621654 or you can say 655 shares okay wasn't that a simple question asked in the exam coming to the third model we have in hand is traditional position this is not a very important one okay this is actually never been asked in the exam so but we'll still cover it for the theory portion traditional position third is traditional position now this was expounded by graham and dodd by graham and dodd now there's this formula for this is P0 is equal to DPS plus EPS divided by 3 into the multiplier. Again, P0 is market price per share. You know that already. Market price per share. M is multiplier. And you are very well conversant with these terms. DPS and EPS. The dividend per share and the earning per share. So, according to Graham and Dodd, the stock market places more weights on dividends than on the retained earnings. So, in the valuation of shares, the weight attached to dividend is equal to four times the weight attached to the retained earnings. So, this concept is not much of a practical importance. So, we are not going to cover it in more detail. Coming to the next concept that we have is Graham. No, not the Graham. Graham is was in the traditional position only this is Gordon model now Gordon argues that what is available at present is preferable to what may be available in the future because of risk and uncertainty in the future that's very much right that you prefer an amount to be received today instead of receiving it a year later this model is more or less similar to your growth model okay and the formula for Gordon model is this is P0 is equal to EPS 1 minus B divided by KE minus B into R okay so P0 is current market price. P0 is equal to current market price. EPS is earning per share. B is retention ratio. KE cost of equity you know it and R is available return. 
from the projects of the company so if you see it clearly that this is 1 minus b b is the retention ratio if we deduct the re retention ratio from 1 we get the dividend payout ratio this is dividend payout ratio right so this is eps into 1 minus b the whole thing divided by ke minus b into r this b into r is also known as growth rate so in case in your question the growth rate is missing and you have both these ingredients you can actually calculate the growth rate by multiplying these two so there is a question that appeared in may 2011 of the ca final examination so let's have a look at that question okay the question says the following information is given for qb limited earning per share is 12 dividend per share is rupees 3 cost of capital 18 percent internal rate of return internal rate of return is your available return retention ratio is 40 percent that is your b okay this is ke your dps and your eps the question requires you to calculate the market price per share using first is the gordon's formula and second is the walters formula so let's look at it solution first we are going to calculate using the gordon's formula the formula was eps 1 minus p divided by ke minus p into r this was p0 so we have eps as 12 1 minus retention ratio as 40 divided by ke is 18 percent minus 0.22 into 0.18 right cost of capital no ke is 0 0.18 b is 0 0.40 b is 0 0.40 and the internal rate of return that is available return is 0.22 so let's just calculate this this is 0 0.40 into 0 0.22 minus 0.18 doesn't make any difference it comes in negative so because we are ignoring the negative sign here so this is 12 into 0.60 divided by memory call and this comes out to be 78.26 okay this was according to the Gordon's formula. So let's do the question according to the Walters formula. So you remember the Walters formula, right? The Walters formula was DPS plus EPS minus DPS into AR divided by RR and the whole thing to be divided by RR. DPS was 3 plus eps was 12 minus 3 into available return was 0 0.22 divided by the required return cost of equity was 0 0.18 the whole thing divided by 0.18 so let's just solve this this is 12 minus 3 into 0 0.22 divided by 0 0.18 plus 3 divided by 0 0.18 this is rupees 77.7 okay so this was about your Gordon formula Gordon model and the Walter model the last model that we have here for today is dividend growth model okay so this is the fifth is dividend growth model now dividend growth model suggests that the fair current price of a share is equal to the present value of all future dividend inflow that is all the dividends that we are going to receive in the future if we discount them and take it at the present value we get to know the current share price of the share 
okay for this purpose we use the cost of capital as the discount rate so the formula for the dividend growth model is p0 is equal to d1 upon ke minus g p0 is the current market price d1 is expected dividend that is equal to d0 plus 1 plus g into 1 plus g d0 is the current dividend and 1 plus g is the growth rate so let's look at a question this question appeared in May 2014 examination and see a final. So let's look at this question. So this question says M MNP Limited has declared and paid annual dividend of rupees 4 per share. Has paid, right? That is. The D0 is given to us in the question as rupees 4 per share. It is now expected to grow at 20% for the next 2 years and 10% thereafter. The required rate of return on equity investor is 15%. Compute the current price at which the equity shares should sell and the present value interest factor at the rate of 15% are given to you. So let's quickly do this question. D0, let's write down the information from the question first. D0 is rupees 4 per share. Now that it is expected to grow at the rate of growth 20% for 2 years and then second year onwards, then after that 10%. The required rate of return KE is 15%. So we looked at the formula P0 is equal to D1 upon KE minus g and we are going to discount that so here we have year 1 year 2 and second year onwards we have the dividends as for the first year this is going to be d0 1 plus g ok so for the first year this is 4 and 1.20 was the growth rate so this is 4.8 for year 1 for year 2 into 1.20 5.76 now for the third year for the second year onwards so the growth rate is going to be constant so in case when the growth rate becomes constant we use the formula as d1 upon k minus g so d1 is 5.76 and the growth rate is going to be 10 percent 1 plus 0 0.10 divided by how much is ke 0.15 minus 0 0.10 so this is 5.76 into 1.10 divided by 0 0.05 126.72 rupees 126.72 72. So, what this 126.72 denotes is this is the present value of all the dividends that we are going to receive in future. Right? So, okay, I wrote it here. So, let me just write it here. Okay, 126.72 PVIF at the rate of 15% are given to you in the question that is 0 0.8696, 0 0.7561, and point 7561 let's just solve it so this is 4.5 into 0 0.8696 present value is 3.9132 5.76 into 0 0.7561 is 4.3551 and 126.72 into 0 0.7561 this is 95.81 let's take it as 30 so and the sum of all these 3.9132 9132 plus 4.3551 plus 95.8130 so this is 104.0813 okay so this is the present value this is the price of the share that is the price at which the share should sell p0 this is the present value of all the future dividends that we are going to get this was as per the dividend growth model that we just covered 
let's take up one more question from the CA final examination of course okay so the last question for today all right this is a question from the May 2014 examination so now, now the, this question says Mr. E is contemplating purchase of 1000 equity shares of a company his expectation of return is 10% before tax by way of dividend with an annual growth of 5% the, com the company's last dividend was rupees 2 per share that is D0 is given to us in the question as rupees 2 per share even as he is contemplating Mr. E suddenly finds due to budget announcement the dividends have been exempted from tax in the hands of the recipient but the imposition of dividend distribution tax on the company is likely to lead to a fall in dividend of 20 paise per share and A's marginal tax rate is 30 percent and you are required to calculate what should be Mr. A's estimate of price per share before and after the budget announcement so let me dictate the question to you once again so before the budget announcement the recipient of the dividend was paying tax on the amount received as dividend so after the budget is announced the dividend the tax on dividend has been exempted from the hands of recipient and now instead of the recipient the company is liable to pay the dividend distribution tax so and what we have to calculate is that the A's estimate of price per share before and after the budget announcement. So before the budget announcement and after the budget announcement. So let's look at it. This is we are going to calculate here before budget announcement. Budget announcement. And that's calculate here after budget announcement. And what we have to calculate as the share price, that is price per share. Okay. So the formula is P0 is equal to D1 upon K minus G. D1 is equal to D0 1 plus G. Okay. So the expectation of return is 10% by way of dividend. So let me write down the facts over here first. KE, we have the KE as 10%. Okay. Growth rate is 5%. D0 is 2. Okay. And here D0 is 1.80 as there was a fall in dividend of 20 passive per share. And the marginal tax rate is 30%. Tax rate is 30%. So in this case, D1 is D0 to 1 plus G 0 0.05 divided by KE is 0 0.10 minus G is 0 0.05. How much is the share price? 2 into 1.05 divided by 0 0.05. This is rupees 42 rupees 42 and after the budget announcement the d0 has reduced to d d0 has reduced to 1.80 so d1 is 1.80 1 plus growth rate divided by ke minus g now in this case the ke will reduce 0 0.07 minus 0 0.05 now it comes out to be 1.80 into 1.05 94.5 so you saw that the ke that we took over here is 0 0.10 and here the ke is 0 0.07 the reason is that in this case before the budget was announced the investor was getting the investor was expecting a return of 10 percent from the company so when he got rupees 10 from the company he was required to pay pay three rupees on this amount as tax right 
so the amount that he was receiving the expectation of the shareholder from the company was 10% okay this is another matter that he is paying tax of rupees 3 30% on this income of rupees 10 or 10% now here in this case the dividends have been made exempt from the hands of recipient but the company is liable to pay the tax in that a case the uh, expectation of the shareholder will reduce because the because the tax the investor was paying earlier will not be paid by the investor it will be paid by the company now right so now what he'll receive from the company is post tax that is 7% post tax so i hope you understood that so this is it for today i hope you enjoyed today's learning today's session happy learning and keep smiling thank you